welcome to Adobe Live. Uh, I'm Danielle Morimoto, and I'm a senior experience designer here at Adobe. And I am joined today by John Sorrentino. How are you? Yeah. Hello, thanks everybody. <laughs> thanks for joining. Um, this is your first time on the live stream, yes, right here with absolutely. us. Yes, absolutely, first time. <laughs> <laughs> nervous, excited? Completely nervous, absolutely, I'm nervous. I am no, so nervous. Okay. <laughs> um, let us know in the chat if it is your first time joining us or if you guys have joined Adobe live stream before. Um, we are live from San Francisco. Uh, let us know where you guys are tuning in from as well. Um, so head over to Behance and be active in the chat. Uh, today, we are going to be designing live in Adobe XD. And John's going to talk a little bit more about what he's going to be going through. But for a sense of the agenda for today, um, earlier at 9, we had the daily creative challenge with Voodoo Val. And 9.30 was the Photoshop um, Adobe Live with Sam Peterson. And then 11.30 to 12, just before us, was the daily creative challenge. And then John and myself are going to be here from 12 until 2 o'clock. And that is the same for tomorrow as well. Um, so make sure that you stay tuned. Um, we have a couple of fun things going on today. Uh, we have the daily creative challenge that you guys should check out um, on Behance. And there's the XD creative challenge. There's today is the order history. So download that and get started with the challenge. We'll be taking a look in around 1.30, an hour and a half, and we can give you guys feedback um, when you upload those to Discord. And then the last and final thing is we have a chat and win today. Um, so 30 minutes in, make sure that you're chatting and you can get a chance to win 100 free 3x3 three three Sticker Mule stickers. <laughs> um, hello, let's see who we have in the chat today. Nina from Orlando. Chat is starting to go off. Yeah, the chat is booming today. Please love send it. your location where you're from. Uh, I'd love to see more people because I'm super nervous today. So <laughs> the more people in the chat, g g we make Jerry me a little less Hong nervous. We have Jerry from Hong Kong. <clears throat> yeah, we have people from India. Baltimore, from Maryland. 12.30 in the morning. LA. Thank you for joining us, yeah. Yeah, all over the place. And today, I mean, in San Francisco, it's a beautiful day. I'm a little sad we're inside, but it's good to be here <laughs> and be with you guys. Um, Sam Anderson, hey, you're probably in the building right now. <laughs> um, but yes, make sure that you are engaging in the chat. Um, we're here to go through Adobe Li uh, like Adobe XD while we're here. And so feel free to ask any questions to John or myself about what he's doing in the program, about like career questions, anything like that, fair game. For sure. So I'll hand it over to John, let him intro himself. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Danielle. <laughs> um, super excited to be here. Um, so my name is John Sarantino. I am a designer based out of New York, New Jersey. I live in Jersey City, um, shout out. Um, you can yes. find my work on johnsarantino.com and uh, I am at John Sor, S O R R E, on all so social medias. So feel free to follow along whenever I post projects. Um, I currently work at PepsiCo, which is uh, the one of the largest snack and beverage companies uh, in the world at the moment. And I work with uh, a ton of talented, amazing designers and uh, creatives. Um, shout out to my team if they're watching. Um, and when I'm not working on projects or, you know, at work, I do a podcast called Well Fed. Uh, I talk to creatives in the New York area about uh, their careers and, and kind of their progression, um, selfishly asking all the questions that I haven't answered and trying to figure those out. Um, but then also, as designers, as creatives, we're always really busy with our work. So, um, you know, a lot of the time I would say like 90% of my day is like working on something. So part of the podcast is trying to figure out how to balance that other, you know, try to make more time first of all, and then like what to do in that time. So going to restaurants, um, you know, hanging out with friends, all that stuff, try to relax and separate yourself from constantly doing work. Um, is it your first podcast you've ever done? I've, yeah, yeah, first podcast ever. Hi. Um, I launched it after the new year and uh, yeah, it, it's just been a lot of fun. Um, finally being able to meet people that, you know, you've looked up to on like social media and Behance and 
finally just kind of get to know, get to learn from them and see what they're thinking. And, and that's always been, uh, it's been really helpful. Um, so definitely, uh, you know, if you're into trying to progress your career, you're trying to figure things out, um, definitely take a listen. And uh, there's some amazing people on there. Sweet. So for today's project, um, a little backstory. Recently, my parents, um, you know, I grew up in New Jersey. They are deciding to finally move. I think we've been there for about 20 years or so. Um, Long time. Yeah, 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 for sure. And uh, they're moving to the Carolinas, and so that with that comes with packing up all your stuff, oh, revisiting yeah. all your old memories, and, and going basically <laughs> taking a memory lane trip. Um, and we recently went through my basement and found a big bin of all of my toys, which I brought one. I realized oh, that I didn't bring it nice. on, on the table. But uh, I found basically a huge um, bin of these little little toys. Look like cars, but they're actually transformers. Um, and it just kind of brought me back to my childhood. I remember like growing up and watching the show pretty much every day. Um, and you know, being asked to be on the live stream, I want to take the moment to do nothing that has you know that I, any ideas that I've had in mind. I want to do something completely different and make it fun. So. Um, I started to do a little research and found this amazing website called tfu.info. It's uh, Transformers University Yes Voodoo Val Autobots Rollout. <laughs> um, and this website is uh, basically the be all end all archive of like any and all Transformer action figures, which is crazy. Um, they do this podcast, they do video, they have a YouTube channel. There's so much information here. And um, there's a lot. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of stuff. That's like, yeah. I'm, and this I screenshot, seen this before, but. this screenshot is also like the actual website. So there is a huge gap over my head. And that's like the actual design of the site. So it's a little outdated, but that's okay. Um, and on this site, you can find any and all like Autobots, Decepticons, everything. Um, and they go by generation, they go by the faction that they're in, uh, the year that they were created. And uh, when you click into a character, you have a ton of information, even more. So it has specs for each, each character for most of them, I think. Um, the history of the actual figure and how it's evolved from when it actually was built or created. And um, there's also this really awesome feature I thought was probably the, the coolest part of the website is that you can identify your unknown transforming toys. So I think of like my parents, if, if I wasn't there with them and they had to figure out what kind of toy this was or what it was, this would be a really cool feature to have. Um, and basically you pick the color and then from there you um, also pick like, you know, Transformers have all these different forms. So you could pick like your car, if it's a train, if it's a, if it's a beast or something, Ooh, cool. and it'll help you figure it out. And I think that's a really cool feature uh, of the site and something I want to like, potentially focus on um, later on. That is really cool. I feel like I channeled my inner like Bumblebee and like didn't even know it today. <laughs> like very appropriate. I yeah, didn't totally. know that you're gonna be doing anything with Transformers. Totally. I'm wearing somehow, camouflage today. In we disguise. are very patterned up. Also <laughs> when you had that slide up of like work, 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 work. Um I think Voodoo Val also said it, but I literally only thought about Rihanna in that moment. I was like, work, <laughs> work, yes, work, this work, is my work, moment work. of Rihanna for yes. sure. Was it like did you at all think about that? Well, when I, this at first I had like? just work on there, yeah. but I figured why not bring a little bit of Rihanna into uh, into my life always today? Always money right You can never there. go wrong Great. with that. Yeah. Spirit animal for the day. Love it. So um, ideas about the website and things that I potentially want to work on today. Um, the first idea is I want to make it easier for users to identify their unknown transforming toys. Currently on the site, this is like a very kind of second, it's like a second thought. You don't come to this website to, uh, you know, identify your robot or your toy. But I think actually it's a really cool feature and I think that could be kind of something that powers this mobile experience. Um, second, um, I want to highlight the amazing content that uh, TFU produces around the Transformers world. So. They have this feed and, and it's sort of a mix of updates and um, they have videos and they do a podcast. And I think now more than ever, um, there are these wonderful little corners of the internet that focus on these like little sub niches like, um, you know, Transformers. And I think that'd be really cool to have a, a feed or a tab directly um, just focus on that. Yep. And then third is I want to create a better index and character page experience. So uh, right now there's these huge lists of characters. 
Um, and kind of going back to that first feature of like being able to identify the robot if you have no clue, um, you're kind of you're you're hit with so much information at first. Uh, they're all arranged by alphabetical order, and it'd be great to kind of parse some of those things out into like bigger groupings, and then slowly dive into those um, as you go on into the into the mobile experience. So I think we want to kind of maybe focus a little bit on that as well. So that's uh, that's what we'll be doing today. Um, First bit is gonna be kind of doing some rough wireframes, thinking about how uh, someone may flow through this app, and uh, yeah, working through that today. Awesome. Yay, okay, this is this sounds great. I it, It's crazy seeing like the existing site too, of like, mm -hmm. it really is, like there's so much interesting content on it, but it's just so much information. Like everything yeah. just seems like it's just right in front of you. There's no like method or organization really to like the madness. Mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting to see like putting that together and like thinking through different ways to do that. Are you thinking of like, so it's a currently a website, right? Mm -hmm. Are you thinking of doing redesigning like a web experience or like a mobile experience? Or? I think I think because they have this really cool identify your bot feature, I think that would be great to make that into like a mobile app. Cool. Yep. I thought about doing the web experience and trying to redesign it. I think it would be for the purpose of the stream, it would be great to take it and turn it into something totally different. Um, cool. You know, obviously it's sort of a little bit web 1.0 and they definitely created it with a lot of intention behind it. But, you know, for fun to keep, you know, keep the energy high, it'd be, so, it'd be cool to just turn it into something a little different. Totally. Yeah, let us know if you've, if you're into the Transformers, if you've like seen any of the like latest movies or if you're anything. If an Autobot or Decepticon, it's there okay. There we go, yeah, so we, we really know who knows their Transformers stuff right there. We accept everyone on the stream, <laughs> absolutely. Um, so yeah, and also if you have a favorite, um, you know, Transformer, and you can name them, that would be great. 10 points to Gryffindor. Wow, the <laughs> references are so good today. Um, I'm a big Harry Potter nerd, love that. So, let's see, where is my artboard? So John's gonna be jumping in, he's jumping into Adobe XD, and he's gonna be designing live um, for the next uh, just under two hours. Um, so yeah, again, feel free to ask if, you know, he obviously just gave his background of sort of where he's coming from, where he works. Um, you flew in from, you were saying New York. New York, York yeah. Right? Um, it was an early flight, and um, luckily I had the whole road to myself, so. Um, oh, that's so nice. Yeah, being slightly shorter in height, it was, great to be able to sprawl out across ah, all three seats. So, so that was great. My last, I just, I was back from, I had a flight from New York, I was in Africa and it's like three flights. Okay, but cool. the last <laughs> leg, the last leg is New York to San Francisco and I was stuck in a middle seat and I'd been traveling for, at, for like two days already. It was a nightmare. So hearing seats. that, I'm like a little bitter. Uh, <laughs> stay away from the middle seat. Unless you're like with family or friends and you can like lean on them. I guess. Definitely stay away. Binyamin bin, bin says, Ravenclaw over Gryffindor. All right, that's uh, your house. I'm not going to argue with anyone on, yeah. on the Harry Potter. I'm not <laughs> too invested. Smart. <laughs> but I see some Autobots in there. Um, Comic Sans over Papyrus. Yes, Voodoo Val. <laughs> um, so last night and you know a couple of days in preparation for this, I put together some quick wireframes um, and just like a little simple user flow of um, how we could kind of navigate through this app. Um, trying to focus a little bit on this like ID feature that we kind of uh, that I'm interested in. So, uh, really quickly, chicken scratch on like a piece of printer paper. Just started thinking about, okay, so we're gonna have a splash screen. Uh, I'm deciding to not do like an account login here. I think, um, you know, we, you can make a business case later on if they really wanna, you know, start doing research about it. But for right now, I think, you know, you're downloading this app to figure out what your Autobot is and then to really get introduced to the world of Transformers. So you would get into your home screen and in there you would have, uh, you know, potentially three different things to do. You'd have your content, uh, which is your videos and your podcast. You have your ID bot feature and you have this index. And then from there, I just started to try and think of either the content types or some of the um, potential filter ideas that you'd be able to do and different categories. And then once you start to kind of hit a dead end for some of these trees, you can start making connections. So, you know, once you get to the end of the ID feature, you're gonna have a character page and then you, that's gonna be somewhat similar to the character page on the index, going through the index feature. Um, so then after that, I just started to dig into some really simple ideas for like screens. So 
The first one is like your home screen. Um, you know, you're gonna have a bunch of different content types in there. So maybe it's the video, maybe it's the podcast. Maybe we're gonna show updates in here somehow. Um, maybe you'd be able to search. Uh, it's kind of crazy to think searching for an Autobot because there's so many, like I didn't actually know. I think I've only watched like the kids show when I was, you know, when I was younger. And I think I knew like Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, Megatron, you know, like a handful. Yep. And then to see this list is like, there's thousands it seems like. So to, to know the exact one you're looking for is kind of tough. Um, getting into say the ID feature, um, using a little bit of what they've already have. So starting off with like the color of the transformer, which I think is a really great start. Um, they're usually like primary colors or, um, you know, they're very simple to kind of pick that first. And then from there go into like the form of what the toy is in. So this one happens to be a car. Um, maybe they're a plane or a spaceship or a helicopter or something. There's so many different ones. Um, so I think that could be really cool if we had some icons for that. Um, and then from here, the third part of the ID is like, once you have those two things chosen, it'll show you all the potential um, choices. So maybe those are just images of all of them. Um, then we have a quick little rough and dirty sketch of a character page. Um, I think the character pages need a lot of love. Um, they have all these cool images and um, they have all these stats and they're toys, so it's not like their strength of nine really matters, but it'd be cool to give it a little bit more purpose and so it seems a little bit more intentional. Um, and then if we go over to the index, this is something that I would love the help of the chat if when we, once we get to it, but trying to figure out how to categorize it almost like, um, almost like a contacts list where you start alphabetical and then maybe go in by the series or the faction or the year and try to figure out how we, how we kind of, um, you know, deal with that. So. Do you always start by, so these you did by hand, like yes. pen and paper. Do you typically start your process always sort of like sketching out like that? Yeah, it's really easy for me to just kind of get a pen and paper. Um, I, you know, I, I tried to get a stylus and an iPad and I never really grasped that kind of coordination between the screen and the stylus. Yeah. So it's always hard, but it's also really easy to just grab a piece of paper and then like scratch things out or like toss yeah. the paper or whatever. Um, and then like now, because most of our phones have cameras on them, I can just take a picture, drop it into Photoshop, clean some things up a little bit, and then just drop it into XD, which I think is probably the best flow for me. Um, and it's totally okay if you use an iPad or you, you, know, you draw on a screen or something like that. It's all about, you know, obviously these are just tools that we use to get the job done and whichever tool works best for you, definitely. Totally, uh, yeah. Let us know if that. you guys have like questions about his beginning of his process. Um, I know we have a question in the chat. How did you get your first design client or design job? Um, so my first design client, like outside of, of full-time jobs was through a friend. Um, the, uh, you know, the way a lot of designers, I'm sure, you know, may or may not have heard is you kind of let people know that you're a designer, you make, you know, logos or websites and you kind of, uh, now with social media, you could do that more than ever. And um, sometimes they just keep you in mind or they have some kind of memory of you like making a logo or website. Um, and they'll just say, hey, like, you know, throw you a text message or an email. Hey, are you free? My friend's looking for someone. Um, so that's client work sometimes. And then for a job, um, at the end of school, we kind of put together a portfolio, you send out emails. Um, I find that it's really easy to connect with potential employers if you ask them to review your work. Um, you're not just asking them for a job and you're not just like asking for something that you need, but you're looking to kind of grow as a designer. And even if it's not a job that, or if it's not a place that you, um, you know, they have any openings or anything like that, definitely reach out and ask for them, ask, you know, hey, I really admire your work. Could you maybe review with me or could you take a look at my portfolio? Any feedback would be great. I think people are really um, willing to help a lot of the time. And I think that kind of leads into opportunities that you can later get a job and things like that, so. Totally, yeah. Um, that's great. For and those of you who are just joining us, um, John is designing in Adobe XD, just going through sort of his initial thinking and process of sketching out some wireframes. And then um, he's going to continue building out those designs. Again, just a reminder for everyone on that we have our chat and win. 
countdown is happening. So in less than nine minutes, we're going to go ahead and do that. And the winner will get 100 free three by three sticker mural stickers. What? It is a mouthful. Every time I say that, <laughs> I like, it's a tongue twister almost. Sticker mural is <laughs> awesome. We've actually used them for like projects at work and stuff like that. Yeah, and I've been that. dying. I'm like waiting to put an order in as well. So. So you're um, like, hopefully I win the China. <laughs> I will go in as another user. <laughs> yeah, off right. The yeah. Side. <laughs> Both of us will disappear off screen <laughs> and be on our computers. <laughs> yeah, they make great quality stuff. Um, so I guess now it's time to design. Yeah, and thanks, uh, Suyog, <laughs> for uh, sending in that chat question and uh, John. For yeah, any other chat. questions, feel free. Um, definitely want to you know keep talking to you guys as much as possible. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so if you have any questions, don't don't be hesitant. Um, okay, so. First screen, um, pretty simple. We're just gonna make a filler for the splash screen. So splash screen, and then this will just give us an idea. Um, the one thing I love about XD is that the a lot of the kind of hotkeys um, between all of like the Adobe and uh, Illustrator, like all the other kind of apps start to overlap a little bit. So you get really familiar really quickly. Um, and that's a lot of, that makes it so easy to just jump in and start designing here. Totally. Um, I mean, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that too because um, at Ma like Adobe Max, our conference uh, last year, um, one of the like big features that was announced, um, and it didn't seem like I mean, in a, a hotkey being changed, like a shortcut, doesn't seem like a big thing, but oh, people, it is deal. a huge thing in your workflow, right? Like when you're using those hotkeys all the time, if it isn't the same across all of them, it can be frustrating. Oh, and completely. right, Photoshop used to have the you could only command Z undo <laughs> once, right? And like all the other yeah. apps, like were different, and now you can command Z like an undo, 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 like infinitely, and it is a game changer. There was also like, that big thing where the shift button now doesn't have to be. Ah, yes, scale. that is the other one, yeah. The... Everyone was so upset for a mm -hmm. week, and now it was just like, now it's like the best thing right. for me it ever. Is, change <laughs> is difficult. Yeah, it's hard to decide like what to change something on like a product that you've been, people have been using for so long, but it really yeah. ultimately made sense. Yeah, it's really tough. Um, so I'm gonna start jumping into this home screen, and um, basically what I like to do, um, because we've already started figuring out that like, um, you know, we're gonna have a bunch of different content types in the home screen. Um, I'm just gonna start making a little bit, couple of fillers in there. Uh, so our width is gonna be 60, 90, and then I'll scale this up to 355. So this is gonna be like a, uh, just a stand-in for um, a video. And I'm making the video image uh, 16 by nine. That's usually a format from YouTube, things like that. Um, and then chances are we're gonna have some kind of header here, um, and then some subtext. Um, and then, oops, then I'm gonna copy this. And then I think they do a podcast, and um, sometimes it's, I think, in the form of a YouTube video, but we're gonna make, we're gonna kind of make it so that they're two different types of, like, platforms. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and make this like a little square for a play button and then the heading will be over here and then maybe there'll be some timestamps, so zero, 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 zero. Nice, and we have a great question in the chat from um, Binyamin about what's the difference between Splash and Home? So Splash Screen is usually like, uh, when you open up the app, it usually has some kind of element of branding on there to let you know that you're opening the app. Um, and it's, I guess, usually just like a little bit of flair, you could say, before you actually dive into what you're gonna use the app for. So for our, you know, for this Transformers app, the Splash Screen will probably be a logo or an image of Transformers or something. And then our home screen is gonna have a ton of different content, videos, podcasts, and stuff like that. So it's sort of a little bit of buffer between from when you click on the app to when you actually get to the content. Yeah, I'd also say sometimes it's kind of used as like, sometimes there's kind of a loading moment, right? Mm -hmm. And so yeah. it's kind of, it's technically also kind of a loading screen, but a splash screen sounds nicer of <laughs> an experience than a loading screen. So like when like, like Uber's app, right? Like they usually had just like the pattern that would come up or like, um, Disney's app has like fireworks, like a little moment, right? Yeah. It can be like a little bit playful. Dep it depends on like your app, sort of like the feel that you want it to have, or it might, might just be like your logo is coming up. And so it's just like an interstitial sort of quick moment. It's a nice moment to kind of 
create that feeling of like stepping into a new experience. Like Uber, yeah. to, back to Uber is like, they do this nice animation now with their new design system. And that's always like, I love, I actually enjoy it. So when you create something, a, an interesting splash screen or this kind of loading screen, it can be something enjoyable and something that you remember. So I think that's really cool too. Um, so I want to build out just a little bit of uh, like a different content type for updates. Um, on the, if I go back over to my slide here, on the home screen, they had these really cool updates that they were making for all these different archives being updated and things like that. So I think that would be really cool to also include here. Um, and I kind of want this home screen to be a little bit of a snapshot. So let's just say that text exists in here. And then this is... Uh, so in the chat, there's a question around um, sort of like the process of putting projects together. They all like sort of built the same way, like when you're building apps. Um, let us know what you are asking about more specifically. Like if you're curious if like the process is always the same of like the way that John is starting to go through. I think everyone sort of has a little bit of different process on how they begin uh, going into their designs. But I feel like generally you sort of start with similar way that John did of sort of like maybe some like research or you have some inspiration mm -hmm. off of something and then you know you go into starting either like sketching people have different ways of sketching like you know we talked about that like yeah. iPad or like you know directly into XD or something like that or by hand with paper and pen. I think a lot of the time it starts with some of those like initial ideas of sketching for me at least like um, I know I usually can't start pushing pixels until I at least get a couple ideas down. And, and that's usually sometimes either like in, uh, it could be in Keynote, it can be on paper and pencil. Um, I go back and forth and I think that's really um, kind of important for me to do. And then um, once I have some of those initial ideas down, they'll either be like a round of research or I'll go and start making these screens like this. And um, I think that's really helpful. It kind of gets your brain moving and, and, and thinking a little bit. So I think that's always kind of good to have. Um, okay, we have a rough home screen. Um, we're going to also, I wanna make a navigation real quick for these three different ideas. And I'm gonna just kind of start creating a little bit of spacing. Um, I love, this is probably one of my favorite features of XD is that I can always see the, the a distance between objects. Mm -hmm. And yeah. uh, I'm constantly checking that. Um, probably it has to do with a little bit of like, being uh, really particular to the details and making sure that everything <laughs> is pixel perfect, but uh, it's something I really enjoy just being able to hold down option. Um, so I'm gonna make this another light gray, and then maybe this is gonna have some icons in here. And we're gonna use the ellipse tool, so E, and um, we're gonna just make three tabs for now. And this could change. Um, right now, like in the beginning of the keynote, I mentioned that it seems like there's two, th there's three focuses of the website. Um, but it might turn out that later on that this might change a little bit. Maybe um, podcasts and ID, um, maybe those need to be separate or maybe like the podcast and apps need to be as well. Like it, it, they can always kind of like evolve over time. So that's okay. Um, but for now, we're just kind of getting some things down on the uh, on the artboard. Yeah, so we are coming down to the last few seconds before we're wow. going to do our chat and win. The I felt countdown. Like I was fast. <laughs> it was like great timing. You like paused right in the great. moment of the awesome. last seconds. Um, so, so you know how to win. Oh. We are going to transition in a second, but head on over to Behance and sign in there and make sure that you're active in the chat. And with that, we are going to head into chat and win. All right, so this is Chat and Win. <laughs> yes, we have the fireworks Back. going. Uh, make sure that you're active in the chat. Let us know maybe like where's your favorite place to travel to? Yeah. Do you have a favorite place to travel um, to? Um, but yeah, yeah, be in Behance, be chatting. You could get a chance to win. What's your favorite? Um, one of my favorites, I would say Italy. I went to Italy and Ooh. I loved it. That's Absolutely loved it. So that's one of my favorites. But if you have a favorite, Go ahead and send it in the chat for a chance to win 100 sticker. 
Yeah. Stickers from Sticker, Sticker Mule? Mule? Yeah. See, it's going to be a tongue twister <laughs> when I say that. Yeah. Mine is Hawaii. I also feel like I like vibe my Hawaii vibes. Yeah, today. you're I in. My, like, you're definitely in. On. <laughs> definitely chill I vibes. wish I was in Hawaii right now. <laughs> That's basically what I'm saying. Costa I'm Rica. Be I've been there. Japan also. Transformer. Great. Haven't Go been to. there yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Thailand. I want to go there. Sicily didn't visit there. New Orleans. I, I haven't been there. planning on going. Ireland is a really good one as well. I loved Ireland. I went there. It's beautiful. Ah, we have our winner for today. Congratulations to the Independent Entertainment Management Group. You are the winner <laughs> of today's 100 free 3x3 three three Sticker Mule stickers. Nice. So congrats. That's awesome. And for those of you who didn't win today, um, we do have this code so you can still go ahead and go to stickermule.com slash adobelive19. And with that, you can use that code and um, let's see, you can get 10 stickers for $1. So still a great deal. And again, like if you didn't win today, we will also be back here again tomorrow and same time, 12 to two, there will be another chat and win. So you'll have a chance to win again tomorrow. But congratulations to Independent Man Entertainment Management. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's very so that's, exciting. Even if you didn't win, that's 10 potential places that you can put your sticker. And it's also a great yes. moment to get your name out there. So if you make a cool sticker, people will uh, potentially recognize I you. I like it, yes, absolutely. Someone was actually asking, are there Transformer stickers? Oh, I'm sure, know? absolutely. <laughs> There's somewhere on the internet, someone is making those, and I'm sure you could buy them, but I have no clue. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't point into the direction. Um, yeah, and so lastly, w before we jump back into Adobe XD, um, again, we will be taking a look at your XD creative challenge submissions of like be providing feedback. So if you want us to take a look and just go ahead and give you some design feedback, if you have any questions, uh, make sure that you're uploading those to Discord and we'll be taking a look at those in about an hour. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Excited to see some work and some other stuff. Um, okay, we're gonna move on to some screens. Um, more screens. <laughs> we're gonna do a darker one. So let's say that this is the home screen. Voodoo Val says this actually owns Transformer stickers. There you go, Voodoo Val. See Voodoo Val for all your Transformer sticker needs. <laughs> oh, shoot, yeah. Send um, everyone to Voodoo Val. <laughs> so let's see. We have our home screen, we have our navigation, and already, um, like I just said, the navigation can change, but if we go into what I'm gonna call our ID here, uh, iDropper, I'm gonna make this our ID tab. We don't have a way to get home unless there's a back hour or something like that. So I think for now, I'm gonna make another home tab and make that four. And just delete this. So this is our active state for now. And then let's say that we are in this tab and this is gonna be our, hmm, our ID. So um, the really cool thing I, uh, you know, when I was looking at this was that I think like being able to open this app and ID any Transformer action figure that you have is probably one of the coolest things about this website. Because it's so easy and they've done such a good job on like creating the content and like tagging things in a way, I think that is a really cool thing to kind of focus on slightly. Um, it's also very intentional on their side. So what they do is they've, let's just copy a, a heading for right now. Um, and let's say I, ID your Transformer transforming toy. Um, and what they do is they give you a couple, uh, what color is your figure? So they give you a bunch of options on what colors to choose. So again, if we were to try and figure out what this figure is, it is black when it's in the car form. So Whoa, when did you want to do it? So I did it while I did it while we were, while Noah was looking behind my little uh, laptop screen. Oh my god, screen. magic! Yeah, so <laughs> now he's like in full form, um, which is great. But um, I'm going to make a grid of colors here, and I'm going to make these just gray for now. And I think they had. They had about 11 different colors. So I'm gonna copy these. Copy this. 
Justin's wondering, how did you select and copy four circles? I click the <laughs> three magically. Four. Um, so you can select all three, and um, you can just hold down Alt and drag, uh, which is just a feature that you could do on on Mac um, in general. And then when we get to actually, once we start kind of moving more. Um, towards like after we have these rough uh, wireframes down, I think what we'll end up doing is like start adding, making like almost like little cards and modules and then oh. start using like the repeat grid feature, which is awesome. Um, this is kind of just giving me a sense of like where things will lie potentially and then how um, to improve them once we kind of take a second pass. Yeah, speaking um, of repeat grid, I mean, could use repeat grid for what you just did. They're shapes, they're oh, shapes yeah. for now <laughs> and I think like, um, when you start having text and things like that, like right now we're just trying to get as many of these done as quickly as possible. Um, and we'll start seeing holes as we get, uh, as we continue to go on. Um, but then once we start adding text and all those things, it'll be really good to use these features that help you move even quicker, which is awesome. Um, so the second part of the ID tab is what form is your transformer in? And I think later on we'll have to either, t after the stream I'll create some icons and we'll figure out a way to do that. So we have our ID tab, uh, there's one more. So this is like ID two. Um, and then this will say something like, your are one of these, one of these, your transformer. And then uh, yellow plus, car or something like that. So, so after you go through and select, it'll actually show you here that you've selected a yellow and a car and it'll show you all the images or all the transformers of that. So our, our ID tab is starting to look like something. Um, yes. We're gonna go into our, um, let's see, let's make a quick podcast one because that's pretty simple. Um, so this will be, I love that the eyedropper is I and not uh, something like crazy combination of keys, which is awesome. Um, so this is gonna be our media tab. And, and really like you're just trying to go through and like get like the foundation of all of your screens. Like it's like yeah. right now it's like we're designing like low fidelity, right? Because totally. you're just trying to get a sense of like all the different screens that we're gonna have and low fidelity meaning like we have sort of like the you know, fake text or like just a sense, like we're not going into the styling of everything yet. No. We're not dropping images in, like we're not working on like the actual visual elements yet. Um, but really just trying to get a sense of like, like you said, like we'll find gaps or like get a sense of like the full experience as we go through. Yeah, and like I've learned over the time that if I start adding too many visual things, like choosing typefaces and colors and stuff like that, I get really bogged down really quickly. Um, yeah. Especially because like I'm obsessed with type, uh, typography and picking typefaces. I think that's one of my, that's one of the reasons why I like doing digital and product design because you're just dealing with information and how to make it super legible. So like I will sit and focus on what typeface to choose for hours. Yeah. Um, <laughs> totally. So it's really just like getting all these things down, getting an idea visually of what some of these screens could potentially look like and then diving in a little bit further and, and going piece by piece from there. Um, so we have our media tab and I'm gonna make this uh, slightly longer. So Priyanka, to answer your question about making copies of artboards without selecting, I mean, you still select the artboard. There's a lot of different ways to copy them. You can pull down option and you know drag over. You can just do like Command C, right? Copy and then paste it. You can also uh, do Command D, I think, yeah, which is command just like D. duplicate, which is also really nice. Um, we're gonna make a uh, like an index kind of tab now, so. Um, let's move this down here. And I like to like work in a very kind of like close parameter of everything. So like making sure that like if uh, the screens are gonna have different, um, or if the tabs are gonna have different screens that those are all called kind of aligned. And then when I make a totally new tab, I'll start a new row and do the same thing. Um, so for here, I'm gonna do, uh, this is gonna be our index. Index tab and um, 
in here, it's gonna be a huge list of transformers. But I think like we should figure out maybe um, a better way of presenting that information. So um, I think Voodoo Val had said it could be like a music app where you kind of have, um, you know, like your album and your titles and things like that. Like, funny side note, I actually don't really use any music apps. Like, I don't have really? Spotify or anything like that. Yeah. How do you listen to music? <laughs> I listen to a lot of podcasts, or oh. I like listen to like live uh, like stations and stuff like that. Because I I have a I I can't I I just don't want to have to choose my music. I just want to be told to, what to listen to. In a sense. Really interesting. Yeah. and I know Spotify has like this like cool curated part, mm. but I'm just not, uh, just too much, too much like thoughts put into that. So um, I just use like live. So many like follow up <laughs> questions. I, I don't think I've met anyone who doesn't have like a music. App. I just, I just like listening to like, you know, like DJs like guest hosting and things like that. Um, and like kind of listening to that kind of musical <laughs> choice. I think that's like the, the fun part about music. Um, teach, teach his own. <laughs> <laughs> So in our index tab, we have um, the ability to, I'm not sure if this is gonna be a filter yet or if this is gonna be like a separate section, but they have them categorized by series, faction, um, year, and I think, um, you know, these, this can be either, I think, you know, there could be a number of different ways we approach this. And then for now, um, we're gonna just do Autobot one, uh, or actually, blah, blah, blah. And then that'll be like our alphabetical list of, um, of transformers. So really rough now, we have some text on the screen, which is looking great. And at this point, um, I like to zoom out, just like to look at things, see uh, if we're creating any kind of flow. I think we also are missing like a character page, so, um, I have this kind of sketch idea of a character page where um, they have started to upload like all these different images. So they'll find the action figure and they'll take like images of it like facing forward and of it transformed. So I think, and they have them separated into like different sections of the page. And I think that would be useful to just have them all at once, um, almost like a gallery. Um, they always have a little bit of like the year that it was created. Um, the what faction it belongs to, what series it's from. So some of that information can kind of be moved up. And then there's always like a little bit about the bot and then it's strength, that's back to those tech specs ideas. Interesting. So, I love like that, like the like whole idea of like the character stuff and like the different views and like, you know, their info and all yeah. that stuff. It's kind of neat to see how <laughs> like, I guess when I was watching these shows, I never really gave it to, you know, two thoughts of like, Oh, Bumblebee is a really heroic, like transformer, and he's like really strong and powerful. So it's really cool to see that someone took the time to do this, and um, we want to kind of give those like little bits of details and information, um, the love that it deserved. That you know that they obviously set out to kind of create when they originally yeah. made it. <laughs> so I think that would be a really cool opportunity. Um, so we're gonna Kelsey says thumbnail sketches, nice. <laughs> exactly. Um, so we have our um, transformer image here, which is gonna be our hero image. Then we're gonna have uh, some smaller images maybe. Um, we're gonna have a name of the bot. So Bumblebee, Bumblebee. Ooh, Nor just joined us, hello. And also said that they watched the movie today. Nice. Very fitting. Which movie? Because there's a few of them out there. That's true. <laughs> Um, we're gonna have the year, faction, series, and then under that, we're gonna have some filler text. There's always a little bit of information. So Bumblebee is the best Transformer ever made. And this will have more information um, as we get through. Ever made. I and just, then, I also hear it in like that movie voice. <laughs> the oh, guy who does like the, the best transformer the, ever made. Yeah. <laughs> the movie voice basically. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then we got to figure out how to do these tech specs. So I think um, it's going to be interesting to see, but I think like a horizontal kind of gauge would help. So if we did something like this, endurance. Um, uh, 
have firepower, I think. And there's also like intelligence. So did I spell that right? Is it? C-E. C-E, right? Yeah. <laughs> Design, not. Uh... Uh, designing live is one of the hardest <laughs> things. I get, so, you get like more stress than you need to be. Like I was doing this the oh, other completely. day and I was like, I swear I know how to do this. But like people <laughs> watching just adds this level. You're just kind of having like, a blank <laughs> moment. You like yeah. forget your name. You're like, what? I doubt everything I... I know. Yeah, who am I? Wait, <laughs> why am I here? Yeah. Um, let's see. You're good. And what else is there? Firepower was one of them. All right, so. We have some screens. Um, and now I think it's time to start giving a little bit of hierarchy, start giving a little bit more shape and going back to the first screen that we made. So this home screen, um, I am imagining this being a kind of update. So I think I'm gonna make this the full width. And I think it would be cool if we, said like update and caps July what are we in June June yeah. 6 I had to think about that for a <laughs> um and I would say that like usually like any kind of update or anything like that it's usually smaller text so we don't need it to be as big as 20 but maybe 14 seems like a good idea uh let's go here yeah why not get some like idea of sizing and things like that I'm gonna make that a color and just make it adhere to the top. So that would be cool. Um, in terms of spacing, get a so little bit picky with that. So let us know in the chat, if, as we start to move, so we started with sketches, paper and pencil. We're now in the stage of wireframes. John's sort of moving forward a little bit now with like starting <laughs> to get into some of the visuals. Moving like forward. Choices. No, like you're making moving so fast. Making <laughs> progressions now, yeah. Oh my gosh, we're cruising. Um, but let us know if you have any questions as he starts to move forward like in ways that he maybe finds his fonts or color choices or as we start to get into visual design, if you have questions about his process, let us know in the chat. and. You know, he can answer anything that... Yeah, don't be afraid to put it in all caps if it's an absolute <laughs> dire question. Um, I will definitely stop to answer it. Uh-oh, what um, have you started? <laughs> it's just going to be a free-for-all. Um, okay, so we want to say that the first unit or the first item in this home feed is most, most of the time going to be a video or something. Um, it's going to have a title, so Transformers, um, let's say Bumblebee Unboxing. Bumble... The unboxing, and you can just move this here. And then I want to make some subtext here. So uh, I think some some details for when you have a video, some things that make it. So I uh, or some kind of pieces of information that expose, and that usually helps me decide if I want to watch it or not. Is usually like the timestamp, um, how recent it was, and things like that. So I think we'll put a timestamp here. Um, and then maybe we should make that even smaller than some of like the body copy that we've chosen at 14. So maybe that's gonna be 12. Um, I'm also thinking that there should be uh, some kind of like little description about it. Um, so we unboxed the new, fig uh, the new figure of Bumblebee from the, oops. Bumblebee from the new Transformers movie. Since who who just watched the new Transformers movie? Nora did. Nora. Yeah. Nora. So, um, so oh, we Nora. have a good question around that they're curious about. Anissa is asking, do you use the new guides? And then the second part to that is, are you accommodating? Do you start accommodating for OS like the notch in your wireframe? So like that. Oh part of yes. That? Um, thank you for reminding me because I I do have those downloaded and I just did not open those up. Um, it's a good question. So <laughs> here we go. I do have those. Apple Mobile. Also, this all caps thing. Justin, what have you started? <laughs> I mean, really, it's John who threw that out there. Yeah, <laughs> okay, we can tone down the caps now. So. I got excited, sorry guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, we go to our UI elements. No, we need the time, uh, tabs, tabs. Did I open the right one? Where is that? All right, I'm not gonna worry about it right now. Yes, Justin, your question is good too. Uh, <laughs> we are both wearing shirts. <laughs> it's a random, random question. So, 
Um, but yeah, so you accommodate for like the notch generally in the OS screens. So yeah. Always a good thing to consider. Um, we're early in design, so right now we're sort of just getting into the visual aspect of things. Um, another question that I know um, has come up has been just general thoughts around like pricing of designs or like if you do client work, like how do you know like sort of like how much to oh. like, yeah, <laughs> Pricing work, <laughs> always fun topic. Um, I think it could be really tough if you're just starting out. Um, there's always that argument of um, doing, you know, work for free to kind of get your experience and really learn the ropes of, you know, what you're going to have to deal with when dealing with the client. Um, and then there's also a lot of the kind of, um, you know, never doing that. There's always like both sides of that argument. Um, I remember uh, when I started off, I really did not have a clue and um, I had no idea what to charge. But it also like something that you. Um, slowly become comfortable with over time. So it's kind of tough. Um, you know, the best way to do that is to get a little experience at like say, uh, like a design agency or something like that and get an idea of that side of the business and then slowly start to use those findings and that kind of experience in your personal work and things like that. So it can be kind of tough, especially when you're just starting out. Um, yeah, it's a tough one, but thanks for sending that question in. Um, I'm just gonna keep throwing them at you a little bit, but yeah, we got totally. another one um, around like general like questions around text, around sizing. Like, do you have a rule of thumb of like how big text should be, like uh, for desktop versus mobile, and how much smaller do you make subtext compared to like headline text? So kind of just general um, sizing questions around like typography. Um, I think there could be a few ways to go about it. Um, so there gets to a point where text is just completely unlegible and trying to avoid that at all times. Um, but there's also ways to kind of push and pull hierarchy and just feel like using colors. So using slightly lighter grays or slightly lighter colors can actually help text recede. Even if it's the same size, uh, someone who's looking at this app or looking at it may not immediately recognize it as like the most prioritized, uh, prioritized item to read, so that's a, a good way of dealing it, dealing with it. Um, but a lot of the times, the way I like to gauge it as well is to like um, using this like prototyping feature, so like being able to put it in this screen, but then setting almost like I think before you can now download like the XD app. Yep. Um, using that app, I mean that's like why it's why they've made it, so you can just pull it up on your screen as well, which is like awesome. Nice. Um, I would before like that that feature, I would just send myself JPEGs and just kind of like look at them like that, just to kind of get an idea. Um, because yeah, it's super important to to see like what your smallest kind of um, size can be, and then what your largest should be, and then sometimes like you know fail, filling the gaps in between. Totally, and I also would suggest like as you get more familiar, like looking around and seeing um, what is sort of existing on sites and designs that you like. And I think there are commonalities that you'll find around general sizing for like what's working best for legibility and what's not working. Um, and also like you can download a lot of um, like UI kits and things mm -hmm. like that that other designers are making. And so um, starting to see what other people are using and um, within like their headers and their subtext um, is also like a good way if you're just starting out and you, you're not really sure where you should start, um, you can sort of see what other people are doing. Yeah, that's one, like one thing that I've recently, so like I've downloaded the, U, uh, the UI kits. Um, and at first I was like, oh no, I'm just gonna like do it. And then while I'm working, like we'll just kind of compensate and things like that. But they're there, they're tools that you can use. They're there for a reason and they're super helpful. Um, and something that we'll kind of throw in here at the end because um, it's just good to get as much kind of clarity and um, kind of that sight to like what you're gonna have to deal with for the device and things like that ahead of the time. Um, okay, so we're gonna make a little bit of a divider here. And let's pixel um, B. Okay, so we have our video unit. I'm gonna just grab this and make that white. And then, yeah, so that's our video. So it's starting to look a little bit better. Um, we're not gonna worry too much about spacing right now. It's looking great. It's coming along <laughs> so fast. <laughs> Um, I didn't have any coffee today, and I don't really drink coffee, but uh, I feel like <laughs> I did. Basically. Um, so I don't drink any coffee, so you're not alone. Yeah, right? Like, I just never really got into it. Oh, um, I think people are scared if I were to drink coffee. I think it's just like, 
It just affects me, like any type of caffeine or sugar, like sugar. You start like to candy. feel like the jitters. Oh my gosh, I feel it in my veins for sure. Yeah. So we're gonna do this as the podcast. So podcast episode uh, 209, because that seems like a good number. And then after that, we'll have um, the ultimate Transformers review. Now I'm stuck on that movie. <laughs> Um, but yeah, for those of you who are just joining, um, John is working in Adobe XD and designing live um, and taking inspiration from an existing website all about Transformers and creating his own version of a mobile application, um, which is really fun. And uh, so ask away in the chat. We'll be answering your questions. Um, I know we have another one here. And then I also want to give you a reminder that in a little over 30 minutes, we're going to be giving some design feedback for the Adobe XD Daily Challenge. So head on over to behance.net slash challenge slash XD um, to check out what today's challenge is and get working on it. And then we can provide feedback later on. Yeah, excited to see all, all the projects that everyone in the chat has. Um, gonna just make some more type uh, font sizing. Um, I think it, back to that type question, I think I usually like to start around like 20, 20 to 24 as like a heading um, on mobile and then kind of going down from there um, or sometimes even going above depending on like what asset or what piece of content you're kind of dealing with. Um, that's usually feels pretty comfortable for me. Um, uh, this is 100, I think that's okay. Let's make this 10 pixels away. Align. And I think maybe this will show the full time. And I think that would be okay for a, a podcast player. I think that should be, maybe there's artwork here for the episode. Um, and then we're gonna go ahead and put another divider, just keeping it nice and clean. And then I think what I saw in that and on the website, on the homepage, they have these like little archive updates that I also want to kind of keep in here. So maybe this is where the text starts getting small because again, I don't, I don't think an archive update is necessarily super important, but when they are doing these updates, there's always a lot of images involved. So it could be a nice opportunity to like click into them and see what images they have, have added or haven't. Um, so I think that could actually be a really cool moment. Uh, so archive updated, the generation, one archive, uh, June update. And then let's make that 14, that's there. And okay. Gotta keep those pixels nice and exact. Um, and then here, I think we're gonna have a little bit of text. Read more. Okay, so this is our home screen. It's starting to look a little bit better. Um, and then maybe we're gonna just copy. I think we can actually now make this uh, a full unit and then we could do the repeat grid on this as well. Actually, hold on. So let's make this. Thing. So Nina on the chat, I know you're curious more about the um, UI kit, I believe is the sheet that you're talking about, the XD file that John was referring to earlier. And um, that's his file. We do, There is, um, if you're looking for like UI kits, um, you can go to adobe.com slash product slash XD. Basically look up <laughs> this. Yeah, <laughs> yes, thank you. I was like not going to read this URL. But essentially, there are, it talks a bit about the plugins, app integrations, but there are different UI kits that you can access. You know, Apple obviously has a UI kit. Um, and then there are some great um, pre designed kits that you can go ahead and you can download these um, that have been created um, to get started um, or just get inspiration, like we were talking about earlier. Um, so feel free to check that resource out. Yeah, so I actually have the Adobe one updated, and um, this is what I was looking for before. There we go. Oh, yeah. One of these. 
Yeah, so and this is basically referencing the, the top notch. Top yep. notch of the Give me phone. Some layers. You're welcome, Nico. Copy this. And I'm gonna go back to my board. Paste that here. And then I'm also gonna go back and copy the time. Where is, this is mine. No. Okay, cool. Lovely. Nice. All right, so we're starting to look like a phone a little bit. Um, I wanna make this, I wanna start grouping these, so this is gonna be my, I don't know where my layers go. Oh wait, there they are. Okay, so this is gonna be my video thumbnail. This is gonna be the whole video unit. Uh, and I'm super big on naming everything nice. I was gonna say, you're really good about it. You've been naming your artboards oh, as you've yeah. been going. You've been naming your layers. Like <laughs> I am like super into just knowing I'm not exactly. gonna lie. I am not the best. I name my artboards, uh, especially because I share a lot of files with other mm -hmm. people. And so it's like very important to do that. I will be honest, I'm not the best about naming my layers always. I am so particular. Like if I ever get a file from someone else, I love it when they have everything <laughs> Grouped, and it's I always try practice. to hand that off too because I think like that's super important, especially when you're sharing files throughout yeah. a team. Um, organization, like I won't dig into my finder, but like all of my folders <laughs> are like do it. No. <laughs> <laughs> all of my folders are like named exactly. Then I have like subfolders. It was just like a habit that I got into when I was younger, and it has helped immensely staying organized as I get older and as my life slowly falls into chaos. My files are, are, are all organized. So. I mean, it is. Not a, like, there's no downside, I feel like, to it. Like, it's only no. a pro to, like, be more organized and, like, name your files, have good, like, yeah. organized systems and things 100%. like that. 100%. It's always, like, super nice to just be able to jump in and out yeah. of files and find things. Um, okay, so I'm going to group this as our home feed. And then to just give us a better sense, going to make this a repeat grid. Anissa says that, John, we developers appreciate you. That's true. Yes. Develop, working with development. And then <laughs> if your files are nice and clean, yeah, it is very that's helpful. That's a huge, it's um, a good that's a huge reason why to too, is just being able to, is this vector? No. Yeah. And I think that's a big point. It's basically a lot of it. It's not just for like yourself. It's mainly a lot, like one of the biggest pros is when you do collaborate with other people, whether it's yeah. other designers or you know, engineering, then when people go into your files, they it's clear to other people without you having to like be there and telling them exactly where to go or like what I mean, it that's is. the big yeah. thing. Part of being a designer or one of the, the the great things about being a designer is that you can like be fairly mobile. You you don't have to be at the office at times or but like, you know, say you have a sick day or something like that. Um, and you're not there and someone else who is on the team has to pick up the work if they're not able to navigate the file and actually figure out like what I was thinking at some at some level, right. that can really hurt like whatever the, the job is or whatever the brief is. And that's def definitely never a position I wanna be in. So it's really just kind of making those like small little like mental notes of, of doing these things can help a huge amount. It's true what Gabriel says in the chat too, like love your developers, they will love you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, be nice to one another, Completely. you guys. <laughs> oh, yeah, totally. so you probably wouldn't like Voodoo Val's uh, files. Hers is, like she said, quote, layer 487, copy, <laughs> copy. <laughs> Voodoo Val, this is not good. <laughs> That's, yeah. It's okay, I'm gonna make a, a course on naming your, uh, naming your files mm -hmm. and how um, to organize them for everybody else. <laughs> Uh, okay, so we're gonna try to clean up the ID tab a little bit. So I'm thinking that this may be a moment of having a nice little, um, uh, like, kind of personality. So ID your bot as being like the header. Um, let's see. Uh, so, the, so from the top, I think that starts to look okay. Come here. Um, what color is your transformer? Seems like the right size. And then in here, so then we're gonna start, we're gonna go back, delete some of these, and then we're gonna figure out how we're gonna do our colors. Um, 
So there are 11 colors, which leaves us with an uneven number, unfortunately, but it would be nice to just like have these big blocks of color, I think. Um, if I remember back to like Transformers the show, um, Basically, one of the reasons why I love them so much and to this day is like the color combinations for all the bots are always so cool and they're always so simple. Um, I should probably start using these toys more as like an inspiration for my color palettes because they're <laughs> just so like amazing. But um, they're always in like these big swatches. So I think the bigger, the better in this case. So let's just go ahead and say uh, 375 divided by two. That's gonna be our one. And I think I like the idea of having them kind of kiss the edge a little bit. Right, you can even use like Adobe Capture and like actually yeah. live capture like the colors and like your we will toys do that or tomorrow something. Because be like fun. this green on here is like kind of faded a little bit, but it's a not, it's a very specific green. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So that'll be really cool. Uh, maybe we'll end up using that tomorrow a little bit. Um, I actually love the Adobe Capture app. Like being able to capture textures and things like that yes. is so much fun. <laughs> I got um, <laughs> it's okay. It's super easy when this guy is here. Um, let's just make this a nice little block. So this is gonna be our color. And I think maybe that we should even have labels in here. So this is gonna be color, um, just in case. Auto. All right, so we have our colors. We have a little bit of space in here. Oh no. I'm gonna make this color one. Make this color two. And then we're just gonna repeat grid. And this is why I love this feature so much because after that, it's like smooth sailing. So two, four, six, eight, ten in a matter of 15 seconds maybe. And here is 11. And then the also cool thing is that then I can go in here, uh, repeat grid, and just adjust all of the panel yes. all at once. Look at that. Um, this little mark is gonna bug me, but I'm not gonna let it bog me down for right now, so we're gonna continue moving. <laughs> nice. And I'm gonna, oh no, I have to uh, ungroup grid and get rid of this. Okay, cool. So we have our colors. Um, I'm going to then move these over and just duplicate this one again because I think the format is pretty good. Um, so it would be, I think at the end there, currently on the website, there's like this moment of where it shows you the color and the form that you've cho you chose. So it'd be cool to then maybe think about like, once you pick your color, if it pops up into like the instructions somewhere and then after it's like, what form is it in? Mm. So this way we can kind of keep that information exposed. So, um, what color is your bot? Then yellow be selected and then maybe Make this underline for now. Um, so speaking of colors, we have um, Susan in the chat who says that they haven't used Adobe Capture before and was asking if it's just on mobile. Um, Adobe Capture is a mobile app that we have, um, but Adobe also has like Adobe Color. There's like a web experience um, and you can choose from like a color wheel. So if you still yeah. also, you could still extract from an image. So if you have like a photo of something, you can drop that in and then it will pull colors from that photo. Um, so that is another way to sort of capture the colors, um, but the mobile app is just great for like on the go and you can live sort of get your different uh, color points. I think that's the beauty of Capture is that it's on your phone. So like you have it anywhere you go. Like I've actually used it. Um, I've used it in like the middle of meetings when I'm like, wow, this texture of this table is really nice. Like, <laughs> let me get a picture of that. And it's cool because then you can adjust the contrast. You can like, it almost like vectorizes some of the textures, which is interesting. Um, but being able to just have it with you at all times and then take a picture of like if you pass a street mural and like it has a beautiful color, that's super valuable. Again, it's just like this amazing tool that you have at your fingertips. And it's not just color. You can also like um, capture like live vectors, like you said. Yeah. Um, you can capture materials now if you're into like 3D. Um, there's like materials. Um, so there's a bit that you can check out with Adobe Capture. And Budabal is calling me out for being caught playing with this toy, but uh, as we're not going to speak about your layers thing, we're not going to speak about this totally. anymore. <laughs> It'll be a mutual thing. Um, so we have our color, and I think like what form is your yellow bot seems okay for right now. Um, get rid of this underline. No. <laughs> Command underline. Cool. 
All right, and then this is the moment where we're gonna have some icons here. I, for now, that's kind of like my idea, is that it'd be cool to have some like Transformer-esque uh, icons in this tab. So as you can see, I have like my car, my truck, my plane, uh, military items, beast items, and that'll be something that we, we do later on. Maybe I'll go and have a bunch of those for tomorrow. But I think um, for now, they're gonna exist within these ellips, ellipses. How many do I have here? So three, nine, 11, 11 again. Maybe I'll make one up. Uh, so I think this would be cool if they're slightly larger. And then they're gonna have labels under them. Have you thought about what yours would be? What do you mean? Like uh, what your transformer, like what your bot would be, like what your color is, like you personally. Oh, like if I was a transformer yeah. in a sense? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I always really liked the, they, I love the Dinobots. Um, I actually had a few of those toys when I was a kid. Um, they were really cool. I also love, um, the, there was, a, uh, there was a, a transformer who was like in the form of a cop car. So it was like this oh, nice, yeah. cool, white, sleek car with like blue and black accents. And I thought that color was like, that color scheme was really awesome as well. But then you also have like Optimus Prime and Megatron. Megatron was really cool. I think he was like the the kind of like not white stealth gray before like stealth gray and sneakers and all that stuff was even like was a, a thing. thing. Yeah, it's <laughs> cool. Like now there's a lot of like uh, stealth, like kind of like the grayer sneakers and that's like monotone kind of vibe. Yeah. I think Megatron was the original, Ooh, originator of that. <laughs> um, we're gonna make some labels here for our icons. So this is gonna be car, real easy. Actually, it would be kind of neat if these were slightly bigger. I think this is 21, that'll be fine for now. Um, Truck, car, and then this is gonna be, whoa. So Benny was asking, what's the ideal screen dimension for a mobile app wireframe? And one nice thing about Adobe XD when it comes to like creating your artboards um, is that they're like preset of like, you just are sort of choosing your phone mm -hmm. size, right? So you can like choose from like the different like OS's or like yeah. you know if you're using like a tablet like it, it and then when you select that it are automatically like has the dimensions that those devices are and what you should be designing for so you don't really have to like go and like search for like what are the dimensions <laughs> that you need to design yeah it's with. nice having all like all those kind of templatized and as like more devices come out those are usually like one of the quicker updates that you, you see on Adobe which is awesome um, and just having those like I remember when I first started doing like a lot of digital and product design, I was terrible at like, I'd always make my artboards and I like remember, I memorized 375 by 667 <laughs> because that was like the iPhone. Um, and I would just do that every time I opened up a new project. And um, now I really, I've started to let myself not remember that, that yeah. <laughs> anymore because devices continue to change and there's so many different dimensions. So. Yeah, I did. I used to same thing before. It was like sort of this automatic <laughs> thing. I would always have to look it up and totally. I was not going to remember it. Yep. And then like even like iPad as well. When, when we have like all these different screen sizes, it's so nice that like, you know, Adobe XD has all these already so you can just open up a new file click a button and you have a bunch of new artboards already yeah for the web also same thing web ipad iphones yeah um and especially too i mean we're, we're talking about just a lot of ios right now but you have android as well and like there's always so many different screen sizes you have to deal with so yeah it's, it's good the nature to, of it yeah nature of being a designer <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i'm just gonna go ahead and label some of these real quick uh, ch -ch 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 -ch. uh, military was one item, might make something better than that. Futuristic, some Transformers like decided that they were gonna be like spaceships and stuff. It's kind of nuts. It's pretty sick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, helicopter, um, beast, plane, military, futuristic. What else did I have? Um, there's a miscellaneous, oh, there's a train. Made me think of like Thomas the Train. Uh, the train. Oh yeah. <laughs> 
Um, motorcycle. A little bit of a different vibe than the Transformers. Completely you know? different yeah. vibe. <laughs> uh, motorcycle, um, train, and then there's a miscellaneous. Do we have an even number? Or am I just making that up? Let's see. Two, four, six, eight, ten. No, eleven. Um, oh, robotic. Which is weird. I think I'm gonna just leave that out right now. There's a robotic robot form. Um, so we're not gonna do that one. Um, okay. Now, this is where the, uh, after you pick your color and your, your bot's form, you also, you will be presented with like a grid of um, potential choices, right? And at that point, it makes it really easy to figure out what bot you have, um, considering they've done a really good job at like tagging the content and tagging each picture. So I think we'll do another kind of, I think actually, we could just duplicate this one. And then maybe we're gonna just ungroup this. Where is this? Put that at the bottom. Um, I'm gonna delete this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and say that this is gonna be our image. I want it to be kind of a square. So 187, 5.5. And then I would love for, what, am I still in a group? I'm still in a group. I would love to have a few bits of information here. So um, maybe it has the transformer name here. Transformer name. And we can just make that Bumblebee. Bumblebee. Um, I think it would be cool to have the faction. So if it's like a, Autobot or a Decepticon, I think that would be cool. So Autobot, and then let's give it a little bit of hierarchy here. So let's say this is 18. Um, maybe the Autobot is like an icon instead. Because, you know, there's clear like icons that Transformers in the show that uh, they use. And maybe this is an opportunity to have that up in the corner here. So we could do that. That's really small. Okay, cool. And then, um, and then maybe it's just okay to have just the name here. Um, we'll get a better idea once we start like popping images in there more and then actually like choosing typefaces, um, whether or not you actually need more information there for someone. Um, so robot choice one. And then, so. <laughs> I like the comment in the chat. We need a daily challenge bot too. <laughs> that would be Very awesome. Clever. That would be awesome if someone animated like a, a bot on screen and that would always kind of like do the, the daily <laughs> challenge or something like that. That would be interesting. Yeah. Speaking of which though, there is about oh, a little wow. over 10 minutes. Yeah. And then we will get to um, giving some feedback on the XD daily challenge. So if you've been working on that, um, you still have a bit more time and uh, we will take a look. So make sure that you're going to send that through on Discord. Yes, um, get them in, move quickly, move fast, move <laughs> swiftly, <laughs> because I want to make sure that we're looking at everyone's work. Uh, that would be awesome to just look at a ton of projects today. I think that would be so awesome. You're like, I've been working hard this whole time. <laughs> no, I think, I think that's like one of my favorite parts of every stream. I've watched a stream for, for a while now, and I think um, one of my favorites is like when we kind of have more of a conversation, we're looking at projects, we're looking at work, and I think yeah. that's super fun. So. Um, it's kind of one of the parts I look forward to. It is. I mean, like, that's one of the biggest, like, things that I love, too, like, coming on here. It's, like, you just connect with, like, a lot of other people. And yeah. you're, like, not that to say that we're, like, super siloed normally, but it's a great time to, like, connect with a bunch of other <laughs> We're designers. People who, yeah, yeah. We don't talk to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Speak for yourself. Um, put this here, and then I want to go into this group. And I think. Okay. All right. Um, what is what is the uh, let's see? X is eight twelve. I was gonna try not to do an X uh, device today, but can't help it. I do like the way the X is. I love how mobile apps kind of. Um, 
the different designs for them. I, 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 I don't know why, but now that like we've been li sort of living without a home button, I love just having a full screen. Really? Yeah. Like that's one of my favorite parts about the uh, iPhone X, so. Um, let's see. We have our ID tab and this is our display shape. Where'd it go? Oh, I have it hidden. Sweet. Okay, so our ID, our ID is pretty done. Um, we can either go into our media tab. We can go into our index tab and create a figure. I actually think that'll be really cool. So let's go ahead and bring this up and let's start making this. So I'm going to duplicate. I'm going to call this our index, index tab. Um, and for right now, I'm gonna, oh wait, hold on. Uh, let's just say color yellow plus car. So I forgot to fill this information in before, but we're gonna make that look nice and pretty later. Um, okay, so we have this new tab. This is gonna be our index. Um, I think for right now, I'm going to just hide that. I'm gonna delete this. And I know that there's gonna be a list of like uh, names here, and I know that we're gonna be able to either jump into like bigger categories and filter from there. But I don't wanna focus on that because honestly, I don't wanna waste your guys' time on the stream. I think it would be a lot more better, or a better use of time right now will be to get into like the character page of the, um, of the app, so like when you click into a specific Autobot or, tra or Transformer, um, what that starts to look like. Um, so we already kind of have an idea that we're gonna have a uh, kind of like, a, a, like almost like an image gallery. So I wanna make sure that this is like 120. Um, I wanna have, let's grab, I think this is a good size. Let's grab a heading for our name. So, this is how, where are you? There we go. This is gonna be Bumblebee. And then bring that in. Okay, cool. So this is Bumblebee. We have the year that he was made. Um, let's make that 14, I'm feeling it. Uh, 1984, I believe. I've like looked at the page so much now that like, I've now memorized some of this information. He is an Autobot. And I believe, what else? There was a C, oh, it's like Generation 1, I think, is what they like categorize it in. So, um, I think we could probably make this interesting. Um, rather than just having like a vertical list of information, I think we could probably do something like Maybe Autobot is over here all the time. Um, maybe this is like up top right here. Come up. Uh, the year, generation one. I feel like that might be a little bit more important. So I think that could be cool. Um, then maybe under it we have this uh, additional images. So I think 40 seems like a good size to show that. Um, actually, you know what, 35, because we want to give it like a little bit of space in between as well. So 35, 35, and then oh, my math is off. My math is so bad. Um, and then this will be like our plus two or something like that if there's additional images. Um, and then after that, I know that there is a... There's usually like some kind of description, um, something that's been written about the, the like the transformer, um, and it usually has some kind of quote. So we're just gonna grab this. We're gonna make this the 14 or something. Bumblebee is the best transformer ever. He is oh caps locks on. He is very heroic and brave and also super smart. <laughs> His yellow armor is bright and shiny. So we'll go in and fill like all some, like we'll get grab some information from the uh, from from the actual site later on. But for now, it gives us an idea of like what a paragraph is gonna look like. Um, and I'll usually set that. 
This is going to be 355. This is looking really good. And I do just want to make a quick note that we're in the last five minutes of the <sighs> countdown before. We're just going to move over five and do minutes. some <laughs> five design minutes. feedback. Um, so if you are working on those designs, think about starting to wrap that up and sending those through on Discord. And then we'll take a look at those in a few minutes. Yes, super excited to see some work. Um, so we're going to give us some headings here. So background. Uh, let's just make that bold for now. Getting it there. Give me the bold. There we go. All right, that's funky. Let's cool. Leave that. Weird little background. Uh, what was? What's going on right now? <laughs> All right. Background, and then we're gonna get into the tech specs. There we go. Um, All right, starting to shape up a little bit here. This is gonna be our background history. And now this is the fun part because these are sort of like made up specs about each bot. Um, I'm sure they're somewhat based on the show, but in actuality, these action figures are not uh, ranked out of 10 for strength and endurance, but I think this is this is like the moment of personality. Um, so 10, uh, I'll make this maybe a little bit bigger. And then I think it would be cool to have some sort of like gauge or something, so. Let's make this 345, let's center that. And um, this will be like filled with color at some point, and then maybe we'll make blocks. So I think they have them ranked out of 10 now, but it seems like a lot, it seems like a really kind of wide uh, ranking system for this small little moment. So maybe we can simplify that down to like be something out of five or, or out of three or something like that to kind of make this information a little bit more understandable, a little bit more digestible. Um, so they give it like, they give each action figure numbers, but I think all, like, again, in the interest of like making this as, as user, like as friendly as possible, like maybe if, um, let's see, 345, this is one of my, also another favorite features of, of XD is that you could just do the math right here. So if we do 345 divided by three, and then we just space that out, we can do something like this where some of the other blocks begin, begin to like just show the empty gauge. Um, maybe this one is lighter gray because Bumblebee's not that strong, but he's really smart. <laughs> Um, maybe his endurance is super high because he's also a really fast car. So that could be cool. And then his speed, because he's an Autobot, we have to figure out how fast he can go. And I would say he could probably hit 90 miles per hour in like six seconds. Cash. He's pretty, he's pretty fast. So <laughs> speed, and then, you know, I'm sure we're missing a few um, stats, but you know, we'll grab those later on. Um, and then firepower. So this is an interesting fact that I read that like some, some, uh, of the Autobots are like ranked on, like there were spies and stuff like that. In, so of the Autobots? Yeah, like, like Autobots and Decepticons because okay. like they're constantly fighting each other. So some of them are like spies and they don't really have a lot of firepower because they're like meant to like get in there really quickly and then like get out like really fast. So yeah. um, I guess that's where this one kind of comes in. So we have these tech specs. Uh, this is starting to look kind of a little bit easier, less uh, information heavy than the, than the site was. Um, and then below that, I know that there's like a moment of like additional like figures. So um, like the toy, if it was remade over. So I think additional colors was one of them. Additional uh, figure colors. 
And then, I know those are gonna be like three images. Uh, and then, I think it would be cool to start using like some of the, like basically just like newer gestures. So being able to like swipe or like kind of drag from like horizontal versus like always having this like vertical stack. So like that'll be a cool moment here. Um, and then let's go ahead and just like extend this a little bit. And under that there is uh, like not only additional figures, but there was a um, history or figure history. So like if it changed over time, and there was a lot of images of that. So I think, um, you know, maybe we'll just stick with this vertical or horizontal scrolling idea. The screen is coming along really nicely. I do also want to make sure that we transition to the countdown is down. I think we're going to oh, wow. move on to our, I know you're like in the, in the I'm such in Transformers mode we're right good. now. Yeah, no, it's good. I know I hate to break up like a good design jam. I like blacked out for a moment. <laughs> I was just like, We're going to bring design. you back, bring you back. <laughs> All right, so we are going to be taking a look at some of the submissions for today's um, Adobe XD Daily Creative Challenge. And so um, today's challenge was about order history. So customers are having difficulty locating previous orders. Can you think of a way to surface past orders efficiently and quickly? Um, so we have some submissions here on Discord. So let's take a look and we can provide some feedback. So Brett submitted Whoa. plates. Loving the color palette. Very clean really so like far. Really like the color palette. Yeah. I love that big icon. So you click log in. Ooh. I like the little animation. Nice. Yeah, we heard the moment that happened there. Nice. Welcome back. I felt really smooth. It's like when I think of like the cooking and like knives and forks, like that sharpening, like that, that yeah. like animation kind of like communicates that to me. So that, that's really cool. Awesome. So let's see. So, all right, so you enter your information and then hit log in. Wow. Another transition there coming in. So we have these explore orders, account. This is looking great. Hurry. I love like how you're using color to kind of like guide the eye around. So like the bright green is kind of like drawing my eye. The red's like sort of sitting backwards a little bit. I think those are really awesome. Free delivery for the green highlights, awesome. Yeah, let's go into curry hurry. <laughs> uh, I don't think I can. Oh, maybe it's a drag? Let's see what the next one was. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Love it. Good. good That's a good of use of it. Yeah, of like Completely. swiping through. I think you like chose your like the prototyping interactions really nicely, which, you know, and it makes a lot of sense, like, within like the cards here of like when you're using those. Yeah. So I think that's really nice. Who's that from? We have this from Brett, I believe. Brett, great job, Brett. That or looks nice. Pardon? Very polished. Really good attention to detail on that like splash, like login screen. That looks awesome. Yeah, it's coming along really nicely. I mean, I can imagine like it's very clear that these are like your different main sections that yep. you have. So like you would be able to like tap through those sections nicely. Um, and it's like very clean. You have sort of like your tags here, um, your different sections going through. Um, and again, that though, is yours, I love Brett Parton. this moment, though. Yeah. It's all about that right yep. there. Woo, those are like the, the and those are the little polished moments that like really like as, a, as like someone that, you know, not, when you're not the designer, like when you use these apps, like those are things that you sort of remember at times. These like small little details that like really kind of communicate with the brand is. And I think that's like a great, great example. So good job on that. Yeah, this looks great. Thank you so much, Brett, for doing this XD challenge. Um, this is looking really good. Let's see if we have another one in here, another submission. I think this one, can we panda? Nope. Oh no, the link is broken. Not that one. We'll check out this one here. Ooh. Okay. This is nice as well, even like nice and clean. Yes, very clean, very simple. We have nothing else is here, so I'm gonna click on this first one. Drop downs. It's very nice. There you go. Keeping keeping all on the same screen right here, that, that's a lovely moment. 
And then there's like, there's something about like when you make prototypes that it's just nice. Like this feels right too. Like it's the yeah. right interaction to just like be able to like tap on it, have it go down, like tap on it to see it go back and like prototyping it to feel out like how it's working is also like very nice. Yeah, I think, I think it, like as you said, you know, to be able to prototype this and you know, when you think about this experience, like when you're coming to look for your order history, you might have a few different items that you're looking for. So like maybe it's just like, you're looking for that one thing, like maybe you're looking for like this water bottle that you purchased, but you don't remember which order it is. You wanna be able to kind of like click into a bunch of different orders and like kind of not have to like worry about navigating a bunch of different screens to go yep. back. And this like really solves that solution of just being able to like peek into that order, close it, peek into another order and not having to like navigate to a bunch of different uh, screens to do that. Yeah, and not seeing like all the details of everything like all yep. at once is nice as well. And I feel like you made like a very, like this entire thing is like the hit zone, right? Like mm -hmm. for the clickable, like the tappable state, which makes sense for like being on the phone and like not just like tapping on like one area here or something Completely. like that piece of text or photo or yeah, something. Yeah, if this was like my Shake Shack order history, everything would be exactly the same because I pretty much just get the same burger and fries and shake every time. So. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, absolutely. I know, and like, is Shake Shack out here? Or is it like, it's in and out is the thing out here? It's in and out Yeah, for sure. I passed one and I had to have so much discipline not Like when you said it. that, I was like, in and out I could definitely, <laughs> I wish I could eat a burger right now. Yep, I will be doing that later today. <laughs> awesome, well thank you for submitting this. It looks really great. Um, I don't know if we have any, I think maybe one more here. I don't yes, know if we've Cindy. done this one before. So Cindy, let's take a look. Oh, wow. All right. You got a whole challenge. page up and everything, Cindy. Awesome. Day one. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Killing okay, it. so we have the first screen here, or like the splash maybe, like we were talking about earlier. Yep. Delivery to, so we have the food, mm -hmm. locations. We have like our bottom navigation here. I think this is, is this a video that she like record it. Awesome. Yes. Let's take a look. Oh, nice. I like that little animation in the nav bar. Let's watch it one more time. Okay, so it's that it's that kind of interaction. That's another great way to do like a splash screen to the home screen kind of nav. That's awesome. Um, grabbing a bunch of really good images. Yeah, That's and great. I would just think about like the like typography, like the little bit of like the details of things, mm -hmm. like your Washington text is like, like large and you have this arrow that's like pretty big as well, but then delivery to, you know, it's a little bit smaller, but it's also like different colors. So there's mm -hmm. just like a lot of choices. So sometimes just like playing just with scale or like just with color. Um, Cause sometimes when you like do too many changes, like everything is too different, it can be a lot. So sometimes just playing with like one or two yeah, totally. things within scale or- Font sizes are like a really great place to start because um, I remember at the beginning of one project, um, you know, we had like six or seven different headings and the difference between like heading one, heading two and heading three was like two, two like pixels basically and at that point it's like can we just combine some and I think there are moments where um, like in the app design that we did today like there are moments where 12 and 14 seem really close so like can it just be 14 or can it be something smaller than 10 or I'm sorry 12 and if, if it if it is the same thing kind of like in this example of like where delivery to Washington DC seems somewhat closer um, but you know, Washington DC is larger. Can you just make it the same size? And does that color differentiation, is that enough to kind of signify to the user that like either this is selectable or this is different? So I think that's yeah. an opportunity to do that there, but um, still that animation is like looking good. Animation's nice, yeah. <laughs> Great job, These are. this looks really great. Thank you for f doing this as well, doing the XD challenge. Um, they're with the XD challenges, um, they unlock every day. And so um, there will be another one tomorrow and John will be joining us again tomorrow, same time from 12 until two. And so uh, there will be another chance to submit and like to go ahead and download the XD daily creative challenge. And then we'll provide feedback again on tomorrow's stream. Um, so don't Forget, you can always tune in and um, work on one of those. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely take a chance. Definitely try to get some projects in there. It's always good practice too. Like, um, you know, if there's ever a slow day or something like that and I'm watching the stream, I will go ahead and like try to submit. I've actually done it multiple times on the stream. There I think like when 
Christine Arth was here. I did an X, uh, I did the challenge for her. I did an XD challenge um, a couple weeks ago for this. Like it's just good practice and it gets you really familiar. And sometimes it's a great warm up too. Like um, being in New York, sometimes this is like after lunch for me. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like actually gets me to start moving and thinking again. Whereas sometimes after lunch can be really hard, especially when you have something like Shake Shack or In and Out. So <laughs> it can be tough, but. Um, <laughs> You know they're always good. They're always good uh, practice for sure. Yeah, I also so I'm like teaching a course, and so I have my yeah. students actually doing some of these daily creative challenges. So it's <laughs> nice. like a little easy, like you know, like introduction to getting into like different focused areas of yep. like types of things you're going to need to build in an app, like a home screen or order history or mm -hmm. like a leaderboard or a dashboard or things like that. So it's also good, like if you're not working on something like in your day to day, but you need like it's just a good thing to expand upon and like get experience like designing something else totally. or thinking through that. Yeah, it's always, it's, it's just definitely participate tomorrow. If you hit didn't today or if you're a little hesitant, please, please, like there's no judgment. Like, Judge-free <laughs> zone, chill vibes and Hawaiian t-shirts all day. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So we're going to jump back in. Yeah, John's still designing in Adobe XD. And yep. so um, he's going to be going through finishing out um, some of the designs for today. Um, yeah, I'm going to, I want to try to put this index together. And I think um, I would love to, like, in the last 20 minutes or so, figure out um, maybe some a little bit of prototyping. So, like, clicking through screens and seeing how that feels. Um, so if this, we're going to back up from this character page a little bit and then we're going to go into our um, index. So I think uh, if we were to type in, whoa, caps lock. Um, if we type in faction, um, that's going to be an item. Year, that's going to be an item. I, I'm just at, uh, kind of like tossing the idea here where if it, what if it's like an uh, just a big list and you're able to categorize or you're able to filter through categories. I'm not sure yet. I'm still not sold on one or the other. So I'm just going to go through with this first one and just make a bunch of different categories that you can jump in. Um, so faction year. And then what was the other one? Let's see. Series. So series is going to be one. I'm going to just make some neat little dividers here. All right, come in. Where'd that go? There we go. All right, so. Ariana says, these wireframes are really nice. <laughs> Thanks, Ariana. I appreciate that. Yeah, That's they're coming along really well. I think that like, it's hard to, like, be designing live and, like, oh, yeah. starting from the beginning and, like, letting people into, like, your whole process, but it's good. <laughs> it's also, you know, like, a lot of the time you're designing and you're in your own head and you're thinking to yourself and somewhat having a conversation with yourself and now you kind of have to have that with the chat and have that with um, with Danielle as well. So it's definitely a different experience. Um, usually it's just me and my plants. So uh, ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely new. Um, but so we're going to make these categories really quickly. Um, there's going to be a little arrow somewhere over here for now um, that you can click into. Uh, we're going to make that here. And these will just stand in. Again, we're still at like a wireframe for, uh, wireframe level that's really rough. Um, I think probably for tomorrow, I'll come in, we'll maybe make some choices together in the chat um, about some branding and some typefaces and some colors. Um, but for the most part, from there, we'll be able to kind of put a little bit more visual aesthetic into this. Um, and I think here we're going to do our 21. This is going to be our first Autobot. Autobot number, number. And then we're just going to repeat this. That is so nice. Whew. As long as you don't give it a name, this works. Or like a specific number value, this works perfectly. Um, I'm going to name this our tab nav. Copy that from here. I'm gonna get rid of this because I want this to be fixed at the bottom here. And then, because I want to get this into some kind of clicky states with prototype. 
You do work pretty quickly, and it's funny because I can hear you have your mouse, so I can every time you click, it's like very much like audible. And I do you have a mouse? And you like then when you delete, it's all like it's I not to say it's putting me to sleep, but it's almost rhythmic. Like like <laughs> listening to you work is like a different thing than just like watching you work. <laughs> I do um I do have a mouse with me, and it's been I, I actually for a while I had a lot of uh, trouble finding a mouse. Um, I don't know if anyone else here in the chat, if you use the trackpad all the time. Um, it's probably not good that this happened, but like my hand started to hurt a lot and I had to find a mouse. And I've been on a journey to find the perfect <laughs> mouse for like the last couple of weeks and I finally landed on one and I gotta say I enjoy it. It helps me design so much quicker and it makes my hand, like my hand doesn't hurt at the end of the day, which is huge, so. That is a good um, thing. <laughs> yeah, uh, Anissa asks, hey John, Hello, Anissa. We'd love to see how you approach design style guides for your projects. Um, Anissa, is that specifically for digital or is that for just projects in general? Um, because I'd love to talk more about that. <laughs> um, I think in general, when I come up with style guides or anything like that, um, for me, I always end up starting with like the, uh, I, I don't know, well, I guess it is somewhat specific to either digital or like if it's outside of a digital project. Um, for something like this, to usually do a style guide or a design system, I'll start with like the heading sizes and try to find like either overlaps or like moments that we can kind of consolidate sizing um, so that we really kind of start to establish like a hierarchy. Um, from there, we'll do elements like colors and make sure that we have like all the variables. Um, and this is just sort of like experience from working with developers. So having like all of these little variables that they can change in and out is really nice. So having things like colors, your font sizes, uh, your typeface choices, um, and then from there going into the smaller elements that are or components that are gonna be reused, so like your buttons and things like that. Um, for other projects, it's definitely um, depends on like the applications or the scenarios that they're gonna be used in. But for me, I always start with type. Like that's my, it's like my bread and butter. I love that. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna prototype a little bit and. Let's see, I know there's something wrong here. Well, I think also on that, like for Anissa said specifically for this project, but anything you'd like to share. But I think also like with this, like there's existing content, like there are characters and they have specific colors and things already. And sometimes mm -hmm. I feel like when I am designing for something where I know I'm gonna be pulling in a lot of images or like characters that already have specific styles and there's a lot going on like visually already, I might then make sure that my application's going to be like clean, simple colors, like something that really lets those things speak so that there's not like too much clashing. Um, so sometimes like the content itself kind of forces your hand a little bit or like it's mm -hmm. easier to decide. Um, and other times when you don't have like all that type of content, it's kind of like a free for all and you can kind of explore <laughs> with color, right? Or like pick sort totally. of what you like. Um, so at least that's something for oh, me this as is well. still not working. What is this? 812 is my viewport. Am I doing something wrong here? Oh. oh, whoops, I know what I did. No, I should have, uh, 812, vertical. Okay, let's click on some stuff. Um, so let's say that this is our home tab. This is gonna be here. And then when you click to here, this is gonna be like our ID moment this is gonna be our id tab so drag this here uh the triggers tab the transition is action transition animate i want to slide left so i don't know if i have something wrong here let's see if i do artboard in design tab uh, x i'm just gonna copy everything on this I feel like I might have messed that up. Home screen. Prototype. Uh, I want to click into that. I want to slide left. Um, ease in. I like to play around with these animations a lot. Um, I think they're, it's kind of like the fun part when you get to this is that like you can kind of, um, just kind of still broken, no. You can still just like mess around and things like that. Um, I think we could still get this to work in here 
if we click that. No, malfunctioning. That's all right. I will have to go and figure this out after the stream, but we're gonna probably get into a little bit of prototyping tomorrow. Um, for now, we have our home screen, we have our ID tabs. So we're able to kind of see how we're gonna move through this, choosing your color, choosing your form, and then once you get this list of Autobots, what you're gonna be able to jump into as the, um, as the character. Um, the one thing that we haven't really dealt, in, dealt with is this like media tab. So what I'm gonna do really quickly is just duplicate this home screen, which is a mix of like the updates, the videos, the, the podcast. And I'm gonna just try to extend this out a little bit. Let's see, let's go to 2,500. Um, and then I wanna make sure that, let's go ungroup. I want to start getting rid of these updates because in this feed, I only want there to be like videos and um, videos and podcasts. And I think maybe at this point, it's even better if we just like start making the decision of, do you have to choose to go into one or the other? Or is it just like a feed of just a mix of those? Um, I think we can start to maybe think about like a secondary navigation actually. So. Uh, let's get rid of this item. Let's get rid of this is that. And then let's go here. Let's make podcast. Uh, let's make that like 18. Auto. And then let's do one that says videos. Podcast. Or, yeah. Podcast, video. So we're going to make a secondary navigation that, like, when you click into this tab, you can choose between one or the other. I think it would probably be nice to prioritize video for now. And then we can make a bunch of video selections or duplications. Actually, I can make this one big thing. And through the magic of repeat grid, we have a video tab completely done already. Not completely, but. Pretty or close. Less. Pretty close. <laughs> um, let's just make this 812. Um, and then I want to be able to just like, like immediately recognize that I have, I'm either in the video or the podcast section. Right now we just have two, two like pieces of text at the top. So maybe if there is a nice little slide, oops, nice little slider here and we give it some rounded edges like that, um, send it to the back, and then compress this a little bit. So maybe this will be like a toggle, send that to the back. So our line is going to be right in the middle, width of one, I'm actually going to make that, yeah, one's fine. And then we can just center it. to be in between here, so like that. And then maybe that when this one is selected, um, there'll be some kind of like color change or something like that. So actually we can even do something like this. We can make the fill like this sort of gray. And create a double one of this. And that will do the job for right now. So now like we're able nice. to kind of switch back and forth. And from there you can like actually understand like, okay, when you get to this media tab, um, you have this option to go look for specifically video, specifically for podcasting uh, episodes and things like that. Um, so we only have a few minutes left. But I think one of the things I like to kind of figure out at the end of the day or at the end of the project, right? Like we just kind of went through and did all these wireframes. Um, I know that while we're, we're working really quickly on this stream, I know there's a bunch of questions or like really kind of weird moments here. So one thing that we're not looking at is like, if, you know, is there really a need for search in this app? I think there is, right? Because we're gonna have this feed of content and maybe there was an episode that you remembered and then maybe you wanna be able to go back and search for that one specifically. So I think like we're gonna have to go ahead and add search at some point add search uh, to the app. 
I think that'll be really helpful for people. Um, yeah, I mean, we're almost down to like the last few seconds of our stream for today. <laughs> so I do want to say like, John's been working on this. We have a great like sense of his process for today. We will be back on the stream again tomorrow. Same time, John's gonna be back on from 12 to two tomorrow. So make sure that you're coming back. We'll have another chat and win. We'll go through XD Daily Creative Challenge. Um, so we really appreciate you guys joining us. And how do you feel your first day? I'm um, feeling a lot better. Good. Thanks everyone <laughs> in the chat for kind of guiding me through this uh, stream today. Uh, really help and appreciate. Er, really helps to, uh, you know, have you guys there and, and answering questions along the way. It makes me feel really super comfortable. Um, but yeah, I think this has been so much fun. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put some things together tonight that we can come in and really start dealing with some more visual aspects of the app and the experience. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see where we land with uh, with this uh, this project. Great. So thanks, you guys. Tune in tomorrow.